5G is here, but the big carriers want you to sign a pricey long-term contract to get access. Well, not anymore, because Straight Talk Wireless has rolled out 5G coverage nationwide, with plans starting at just $35 a month and no contract. Plus, get a Samsung Galaxy A32 5G for $299, all on America's best networks. 5G coverage, 5G phones, less money. Straight Talk Wireless, available at Walmart and Walmart.com. 5G-capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. Con Cox Internet y Home Life, sabes cuándo llega tu pizza. Ver cámaras. ¡Pizza! Ve tus cámaras Home Life en tu TV con el control por voz de Contour. Funciones requieren suscripción a Cox Internet y Contour TV. Servicios provistos por entidades licenciadas de Cox. De Cox.com diagonal licencias. Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. Dr. Jay Calvert here. Dr. Millicent Ravello. Dr. Ravello, what do you want to tell me about teen plastic surgery? Teen plastic surgery is about the teenagers, but it is also equally about the parents. Because oh, yes. as any pediatrician will tell you, they love their jobs. They love their kids. It's the parents that are the real patients sometimes. And we are parents. And we are parents. So we, so we, we get we it. Get on, <laughs> we're right on board with this We one. get it. We get it. Uh, surgery. We're not parents your... together. We are no. parents of other children. <laughs> Let's clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. I had four kids with Chris. You got one that you had like when you were like in high school or whenever that right. was. But, right. uh, you know, it's all good. Um, so we get it. So this is a topic designed to, you know, really educate teenagers, but more important. St- most importantly, their parents, about what exactly is involved in the decision-making process of a teenage plastic surgery. So, and this is the, so the, the operations that come up, and it's why I had a, uh, a Freudian slip there, is teen rhinoplasty is very common. We get a lot of questions about teen breast augmentation lately. A breast lot. augmentation, uh, for sure, especially, I think, in this part of the country. Um, and teen then- lipo. Teen lipo in my practice, it's it's teen breast reduction um, that I see a lot of. So I think yeah, you see teen rhinoplasty, I see teen breast reduction, and then a smattering of other things in between. Yeah, I mean there's some, you know, and, and we're really talking about teen aesthetic surgery because there's a lot of teen like reconstructive surgery, sure, like if there's breast athelia, absence of a breast, and putting in an implant and trying to make a nice breast is you know pretty common. Those aren't yeah. those aren't things that you have to scratch your head over. But you know, should your you know, 17 year old who's uncomfortable with their size of their breasts get a breast augmentation. You know, is that, is that right. a, a parental that, choice or should they wait till they're 18? Zone. Yeah. It is. And, and, and that does come up. Right. Um, rhinoplasty is a little more straightforward. Uh, there's some kids walk in and, you know, they're just like, this hump is really awful and I want it off. And the parents are like, we want it off for yeah. her. And it's like, okay, this yeah. is going to be awesome. Everybody gets it, yeah. And it, there's not a lot of scratch in your head. But what I do and how I approach teen plastic surgery in general, and it's because I, I had a, a patient who wasn't a teen, but it had teen rhinoplasty. And I'll, and I'll tell you about her. Uh, what I do is I ask the patient, you know, I listen to the parents because they like to talk first, but I really sit there and I have a heart to heart with the patient. And if that patient can express to me in an adult manner, though, though they are a teenager, whether they're 15, 16, 17, 18, I don't care, but if they can express to me in an adult manner why they want the rhinoplasty or whatever it is they're talking about and, it, and the indications are there from an anatomic standpoint, then I'm, then I'm cool with it. But if it's the parents like dragging their kid in because they want them to have it, I'm, I'm mm, yeah. Let's wait a year or two. You know, it's not, this one's not cooked yet. Not right. Yeah, I, I think I probably do the same thing with my breast reduction patients because yes, usually initial part of the conversation, some very mature teenagers will talk and tell their own story, but sometimes it is the parents that are coming in and, and talking for the teen. But I have a an out in the sense that I say, okay, now I'm going to examine the patient and I kick the parents out of the room so I can examine the patient. And then that's, as I'm examining them, that's when I really get to talk with them. I get, let them loosen up, ask them some questions and be like, so what are you thinking? Or, you know, why are you here? Or do you know anybody who's had this? And then that's when they really start talking. And so that's my opportunity to sit with them. And then once I'm done examining them, I sit with them. 